Today we're going to have a look at half dam. It's an unusual field. In fact, we describe it as a, an offshore, unconventional, conventional oil field. And we'll explain why we come up with that flag. Half dam is located in Denmark. And here's some interesting facts about Denmark. The national bird is the swan. 10% of all globally traded goods are transported by Danish shipping containers. That's, uh, of course, Maersk. It's the oldest national flag in the world. And Danes, apparently, always wait for green lights. With the other uh, fact is 41% of Denmark's energy currently comes from wind. However, when we look at the oil and gas, you can see Denmark, a very, very thin slither here within uh, all of Europe's oil producing nations. If we look at it in a little bit more detail, we can see that for the last two decades, essentially the oil production has been on a decline. Also worth noting that in 2020, all future bid rounds were cancelled, so it's not likely that we're going to see any uptick in the oil production rate. A little inset map here in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, you can see Denmark, the offshore region. However, it's only in this western area, quite close to the, the central Graben, that we have all the oil fields, and here are the pipelines shown going back to, uh, going back to shore. The map itself shows all the uh, major oil fields and producing oil fields and gas fields throughout the area. Highlighted here in the southeast region is Halfdan, uh, operated by uh, Total Energies. A little bit of background on Half Dan. It is Denmark's largest producing field. Discovered back in 1998, when a horizontal well was drilled from the Dan field and essentially just kept on going. It was 9.1 kilometers and it just stayed in oil. And uh, this was the discovery of Half Dan. Uh, following on from that, a year later, the Nana 1XP well was drilled. It was a vertical well, and it actually discovered the field and the, more of the extent of it. Half Dan came on stream that same year. Wells were drilled from the Dan platform. Now, the oil at uh, Half Dan is a very nice 33 API gravity oil. Operator Total Energies with partners Nord Soffenden and Blue Nord. Oil goes from half down back to shore via Gorm, and the gas goes from Dan to Tira to the shore. So kind of having a look at uh, the setting of uh, half down, it actually sits in the low between the, the Dan field, shown here, and the Skjold field, very prominent salt diaper feature here. Now here is half down, and it kind of sits in the sort of syncline between the two of them. Primary reservoir for half down is the Maastrichtian Late Cretaceous Tor Formation, a non-structural trap. Now this is going to be interesting and described as not being in equilibrium, and we'll come on to that. The reason that the uh, gas oil contexts they are tilted, and pressure data within the wells in the oil zone show that there are lateral changes within a continuous oil leg. It actually implies that the oil itself is moving. Here's a, a very simplified map of it showing the main half dan and this half dan northeast. It was formerly known as Sif and Igor, but uh, more commonly just half dan northeast these days. Having a look at the play characteristics, well, the reservoir is non-fractured, very low permeability, Maastrichtian chalk between a half and four millidarcies matrix permeability. The uh, porosity, well, it's sometimes as good as 37%, but uh, generally can be quite poor in sort of one to three meter bands. Hydrocarbon saturation, well, it's packed full of, uh, of oil, 90%. And that's because there is a very high oil column. It's uh, the order of 200, 250 feet. There is a secondary reservoir in the upper Danian chalk, which we'll have a look at in a second. And uh, it really is the fact that it's this low permeability reservoir that required an unusual or unconventional development plan. Here's a log from the uh, Nano 1XP discovery well. You can see here is uh, sort of porosity and uh, water volumes. You can see here's the, uh, the Danian reservoir up at the top here. This is lowermost tertiary and Maastrichtian well, that's at the top of the uh, Cretaceous good quality reservoir rock here in the top 200 or so feet. The seal for the field, well, that's uh, quite thick and at times uh, 
the uh, tertiary mudstones can in some parts uh, get over pressured. I'm not entirely sure if that's the case at half down. The reservoir, as we've discussed, basal tertiary and late Cretaceous. And the source rock, well, that's from the uh, essentially from the upper Jurassic uh, Kimmeridge clay formation equivalent. Now, having a look at the development, here's a structure map uh, at the top chalk level. You can see we're down in the lows of about 7,100 feet. And uh, we come up to of the order of about uh, well 6,600 feet here at this uh, this nose projecting out into the basin. Here on the uh, edges, you can see the Skjold field, which is a very uh, prominent salt diaper, and half down is more of a sort of salt pillow, and uh, it's a sort of a, a much broader feature. But you can see the edge of it here, and it's actually some of these wells that kept on drilling that uh, that actually. Uh, encountered this down dip oil discovery here. There's the uh, the Nana 1XP well, which went in and uh, actually found the, the reservoir in a vertical well. And uh, this was uh, the area that was formerly uh, Sif and Igor, and it's now known as Northeast Half Dam. You can see here the uh, the blue are water injectors and the green, well, they're the oil producers. And you can see that there's basically a uh, producer, injector, producer, injector, and this uh, this pattern in the subsurface of, of where they're drilled. They're drilled uh, generally sort of a long strike, but in places or towards the, the toe of the well are actually uh, going down dip. Now it was developed with a line drive water flood using a FAST technology. We'll come back on what FAST's all about in just a few minutes. Um, now the producers, injectors, about 200 meters apart. There are 71 wells or where at, uh, at the time of, of this description. And uh, you can see that there's um, 35 active producers with 16 more in the uh, the northeast half down and 26 active water injectors. Now, I'm sure this number goes up and down. Uh, we'll have a look at that cross section. And here it is. So it's going up through the Nana well. And it actually demonstrates that as you go to the north and northeast, there is a thinning of the, uh, of the upper Maastrichtian section. So not entirely sure what all of the... Uh, all of the events are shown in here, but you can see a general thinning of, of this uh, of this overall package in here. And the reservoir properties they deteriorate as the section thins again, going up to the uh, to, to the north. There is also on here um, well some inversion anticlines are shown here, and some slumping going on uh, within the hard and Maastrichtian times. Uh, so you're getting some thickening within the sequence. Uh, this is an interesting looking feature here. Anyway, that's uh, that's what it looks like in section. We'll go back. What is fast? Well, it's fracture aligned sweep technology, and it's uh, essentially it's a, a water flooding technique which is aimed to maximise production. The idea is to align the horizontal wells that you drill in the direction of the present day horizontal stress field. Then happens is you're trying to induce fractures when you fracture the well that are basically going to go away from the well, but not go straight back towards the producer. So this is the water injector here and it's showing the water injection front, but also the oil um, it's you're wanting to drain the oil from from underneath these wells as well as above them so you're trying to induce the fractures more locally and vertically from these wells but not actually propagating them towards the water injector otherwise the water will just instantly go shooting across into your producers so that's the that's the plan so it's these sort of vertical large fractures with with swarms of lesser fractures going off into the bedrock to, to actually uh, try and sweep the rock more effectively. Uh, this is a, a more fuller description. So fast reduces the risk of connecting producers to injectors. That's what you don't want to see. The, the fractures are essentially are required to get as much water in to keep the pressure up, uh, keep the voidage replacement high. There's the intent or the, the way this is done pre-fracture the prevailing pressure field is manipulated by controlling injection below the fracture propagation pressure. So just by pumping up the reservoir, you're changing the, uh, the stress regime locally. And what you're trying to do is trying to ensure that any fractures that propagate are going to go vertically rather than horizontally towards your nearby uh, 
the producer. How it's done is using very slow proper propagation rates. The, the, the pressure diffuses from the fracture, um, it, so it isn't a, a, a sharp increase in pressure, but it's done slowly over time. And uh, it, it's uh, believed that this uh, creates the uh, preferred orientation and actually gives a more controlled fracture outcome. So uh, well, very interesting uh, technology. And I'm not sure how they actually measure the success of that, other than, uh, in fact, that they got some great production over the years. That feels like half done. So going back to the petroleum geology and, and looking at the sort of the migration and uh, trapping features, well, you can see half down uh, located here. It's a really kind of unique case. It's a non-structural trap. The oil not in equilibrium, tilted contacts, the, uh, the moving oil we've discussed. But hydrocarbons are trapped by a combination of stratigraphic and dynamic conditions. And these are said to be unique to the region, but are they? Complex fluid distribution is controlled by the primary depositional characteristics, the charge history, regional tectonic evolution, capillary pressure effects, and uh, regional fluid dynamics. Halfdan had a, an earlier closure that was breached around about 4 million years ago by a basin tilting. The updip migration has now effectively stopped, uh, and so the high porosity interval is, is sort of condensed as you go up to the uh, to the northeast. Oil is instead migrating southeast today towards the Dan field. So it's effectively a very slowly escaping oil field. It's been called a constriction trap because the oil would still be moving. Of course, uh, production has, has probably put an end to that geological migration. This is the root mean squared amplitude, and here are the uh, the water injectors and the oil producers. With this repeat time lapse seismic survey, a 4D survey, effectively, that you can see that the reservoir saturation changes have affected the acoustic impedance, and you can actually differentiate between the the oil producers and the water injectors with some gas breakout in in places where there are very large uh, acoustic impedance differences. We can see the seismic response uh, to water injection and a good correlation between injectors and, and amplitude anomalies. It really is working here. How's Half Dam been performing? Well, it's of late has been the largest uh, oil producer in Denmark. Now the uh, sizes, uh, it's oil in place around about uh, 1.2 billion barrels of oil. Oil reserves around about uh, 220 million barrels uh, ultimately, and that's about an 18% recovery factor. Gas reserves are pretty significant, uh, around about a quarter of a TCF. There's the numbers in metric for those who prefer them. So here we're looking at the uh, the gas production for all of Denmark. You can see uh, production here kicking off in around about the uh, the mid 80s, ramping up with Tyra here, the Dan field, and then later on we get Harald and South Anna. Half Dan comes on stream here around about the early or mid 2000s. We can see that it really is becoming one of the major contributors as these other fields decline. And uh, it is the, the major contribution, although anticipated. I think on this uh, projection from back in 2009, that it, it would go on to a sharp decline before 2030. And uh, some of this light blue, well, it's kind of small fields, undiscovered and possible resources. So uh, don't pay too much attention to that. Probably not all of this will, uh, will get realized, particularly as uh, the energy policy of Denmark has changed and they're not having any further licensing rounds. So this is what uh, Half Dan looks like in Trove. Uh, you can see lots and lots of information, maps, cross sections, seismic, write-ups, all sorts. And we use that uh, to, to basically come up with a, the video that you're watching right now. Information on infrastructure, geology, development history, news, wells, production history, you name it. And uh, hey, it's tabulated with over 120 data columns. So all of that. Is, makes it searchable, um, not just within Denmark, but actually globally. Here are some of those columns. You can see here, you know, the type, the country fluid, whether it's producing or not, what the water depth is a trap type, and so on and so forth. But it's not only for, for half Dan, not only for the Danish sector, as I said, it's actually for the world. And here you can see all the assets that are in trove right around the globe. Well, in conclusion, 
Half Dan, it's a very, very interesting oil field. It's a constriction trap. And how many of these could be out there? Well, what are the essential play ingredients for a constriction trap? Well, I haven't got a, a full listing, but I think an active source uh, kitchen that's currently generating uh, oil, hydrocarbons, uh, could, could be gas as well. Essentially moving out of the basin, up the flanks. It's a, sort of a strat trap on steroids, a, a frozen migration pathway. So rather than uh, there having to be, say, poorer perm reduction, what about a play where you have a biodegradation front? So essentially you get a sort of a tar sand plugging up the porous porosity and permeability. And does it set up a trap for live oil down dip? There must be other ideas. Leave your comments and ideas below. And remember to get Trove. Now, Trove is available for uh, all of Denmark and, in fact, the German uh, sectors of, of the North Sea. Uh, for about the price of a couple of Woodmac reports, you can actually see that you can get every single oil field and gas field and discovery and some dry holes and lots and lots of information on stratigraphy and all sorts of other things. Right now, for a limited period of time, we've actually got that special offer on so if you want all your data in one place to be able to look at every field in a country it's searchable it's constantly updated it's the most useful source of information you're going to get for geoscientists and reservoir engineers trove's the place to go we've got other videos like this one one of the very popular ones we did was uh, Ecofisk looking at uh, a, a major, one of the, the, well, the first North Sea giant oil field. It was a real play opener for the North Sea. And uh, it's really unique because it's had a, a decadal production incline. Now, that's unusual. We normally see a plateau for oil production followed by a decline. This is an incline. Well worth watching that video to understand why and how that happened. Subscribe to the channel. Send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, there's the website for anybody who wants any further information.